Now, the last video that I did in my wedding series was about getting ready. So kind of what I did leading up to the wedding, I got a lot of questions about that. Hair, skin, body, and then what we did the day of the wedding. So kind of the morning, getting ready, our makeup, our hair, and I will make sure to link that in my blog post down below so you can go and see that. And this video will be posted on my blog along with my bridal portraits. So I thought it was appropriate since I'm talking about what I wore on my wedding day to have the bridal portraits. And bridal portraits are sometimes done long before the wedding with just the bride and the photographer, but we did ours the morning of the wedding. So after my bridesmaids and obviously the groom hadn't seen me, so my bridesmaids and everybody had gone to the church and I was just with my parents and the photographer taking photos that kind of showcase the dress and things like that. That's kind of what bridal photos are. And you know, you're shooting by yourself and so you it makes you feel special and pretty before you walk down the aisle. So I thought this video would be very appropriate to include with all of those photos. So if you want to see those and you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to check out my blog post down below. So I'll start with the details first and then I'll take the camera over and show you guys the dress. I mentioned in my last blog post about getting ready that I knew I wanted to do my hair half up and that's what I did, but I kind of didn't think about it and I was going back and forth whether I wanted anything in my hair. And ultimately I decided that I did because once the veil came out, um, I would have nothing in my hair then for the reception. So the day before the wedding, my photographer suggested a bridal shop. I was texting them and they were sending photos of their available hair pieces because it is really difficult to find a hair piece in gold. I had the hardest time. So they were texting me at my rehearsal dinner and I gave them my credit card information over the phone and the next morning, the morning of the wedding, my wedding planners <laughs> assistant drove 40 miles to get this hair piece for me so I'm so thankful for that and it turned out really beautiful and I loved having it in my hair so I think it's really special but this is what it looks like it's a comb and it just sat in above where I had my hair half up and then for the ceremony we put the veil over this hair piece so that it kind of just gave it a really soft, pretty look because it is a little blingy and I wanted it to be a little bit softened for the ceremony. And I will do an up close so you can see. So there are crystals along with some little pearls and I really like this little detail over here. It almost looks like an infinity sign and I loved that. I thought that was really pretty. And then for jewelry, I knew that I wanted gold-toned jewelry since my engagement ring and wedding band are gold-toned and I just feel like they my I have a warmer skin tone I feel like they flatter my skin tone a little bit better so I knew I wanted those but the problem was um, I wanted a little bit more statement not something super delicate so if you guys have been following me for a while you know that when I moved to LA almost all my jewelry my special pieces, my family heirlooms and things like that were stolen from me. So I kind of didn't know, I wanted to work a little bit more of a statement piece for jewelry, you know, something with a little bling to it, but I didn't really know what to do. And a lot of people rent jewelry for their weddings, considering my luck and just the fact that we were in a destination place and we would be leaving for a honeymoon soon after, I, that did not make me feel comfortable. So instead, I went with a brand that I've used a lot in terms of more formal jewelry. Uh, you know, you want it to look nice but not cheap. And this brand really does beautiful formal jewelry well, and that is Nadri. They last forever, they look really nice, and so I did my earrings and my necklace from Nadri, and they're gold toned with crystals. And I also did a little bracelet that matches, that's a little crystal bracelet, and these pieces all go together really well. I gave all my bridesmaids Nadri necklaces and Nadri earrings, so we all kind of had a similar look going on, and I thought it was really, really beautiful. If 
you go by the saying, something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue, a lot of people do that. So my wedding dress was my something new, and then my something old was a gold bangle bracelet that my mom let me borrow, and it is a family heirloom. It's been passed down in our family, and it's something really special, and every bride who has worn it on her wedding has not gotten divorced and every bride that has not worn it on her wedding day has gotten a divorce. So we always kind of are superstitious about it and I definitely wanted to wear it. You know, my mom said, well, it's not the most beautiful thing. I said, I don't care for the ceremony. I want it on my wrist for sure. So that was my something old. And then my something borrowed and something blue was kind of, you know, went together. And that was a sapphire ring with diamonds around it that my dad had given to my mom way back when Charles and Diana were together and the jeweler had created a similar ring to kind of uh, almost like a replica of the Charles and Diana ring and it was just besides being just a beautiful ring and something blue it was also special to me because you guys know I'm such a Kate fan I love um, Duchess Catherine. I love her style and so the ring has almost become something new to our generation and I kind of liked incorporating that into the wedding. Then for the kind of second half of the wedding when we had the lights change in the reception and we did this cool thing behind the band and the kind of vibe changed to just more focused on dancing and having fun and I changed my dress and then I wore these big statement earrings by Nina and these are just so beautiful and they're a little heavy but they're just such a pretty statement. I didn't wear any, I took off my necklace, I didn't wear any jewelry besides just these earrings and I just thought it was just, it gave a really pretty effect with my, just my dress that was a little bit different and then these big earrings. I found this pretty blush toned uh, satin bag with gold hardware detail and some crystals at the dress shop Mira, Mira Couture, who made my reception, or sorry, my re rehearsal dinner dress and she also did my mom's rehearsal dinner dress and she is just a beautiful woman, a wonderful woman and we loved every time we got to go and work with her and she was so much fun but she had this in her shop and it also comes with a little chain strap so it, it is versatile and I feel like I'll use this again and again and it wasn't too pricey a lot of the ones that I were looking I was looking at before were just too pricey to just use once and to be honest I didn't really use this we were having so much fun getting around moving around talking to everybody, saying hello to everybody, that I didn't really use it, and honestly, my poor mom had to hold it pretty much the whole time, you know, have it with her things and keep track of it, but it was nice to have to know that I had my important things in here. For shoes, I planned on changing halfway through the wedding, but I didn't because I loved these shoes so much and they were actually so comfortable, surprisingly, that I didn't need to change them. And these are shoes by Renee Kaovia. I think I'm saying that right. I wanted to show you guys the box because the box just is shows such craftsmanship and it just makes you feel like you're opening a piece of art or something so I think that's really special and not a lot of shoes even the more expensive ones don't really have that anymore so they come like this in a bag in a plastic bag and then they're stuffed and I wore these I had to wear these to my dress fittings so I would say they weren't you know absolutely in perfect condition before the wedding but they really held up so well you know I took them traveling and then danced all night in them and they are such a beautiful shoe they're blush colored suede on the bottom and on the back of the heel this is my favorite part though the bottoms are this amazing it just looks like diamond dust it's so so sparkly and beautiful and then they have this Swarovski crystal pattern and on the foot I will definitely 
make sure you, that you see pictures, but they just look like lace or something. They're so beautiful, such a beautiful shoe. So this is my dress, and this is the main dress that I wore for the ceremony and bridal portraits and couples portraits, and then the first half of the reception. And it's my favorite dress. It's absolutely gorgeous. I don't even know if you can see in this video, but hopefully you'll be able to tell in the photos that I post from the bridal portraits. But the dress is actually bustled right now, and... It's kind of cool that you can see it bustled, I guess. I don't even know how to unbustle this. It is so complicated, and there's all these tiny little clear buttons, and it's, it's bustled. I need to get the dress cleaned and preserved, and if you guys have any suggestions for me on that, I would love that. But this is how it looks bustled. I don't really love it bustled. When it's unbustled, for those of you who I didn't know about bustling until my wedding but when it's unbustled basically it's so much longer and more full and it gets in the way when you're dancing which is why we had to bustle it before the reception when we did our there are layers and layers of tool underneath here and there are layers of champagne tool so it gives it a pretty depth and glow that a stark white dress wouldn't have so the veil clips in with a comb and I didn't have a blusher which is the part that comes over your face I just thought it would just be a distraction kind of and I wasn't sure if my dad would know how to lift it up at the end of the aisle so I thought maybe it was safer to just skip that part but the veil is really light just I wanted it not to have an edge to it I just wanted it to be really soft and kind of blend into the dress the same hand done Chantilly lace that's all throughout the top layers of the dress um, is on this veil so it blends really nicely. So last but not least is this Leon Carlo dress that I changed into toward the end of my um, reception. And it was just more of a fun dress. I knew this would be the dress that John would like. The other one was a fairy tale princess, traditional. I mean, you can't wear that dress again. That's just such a, you know, big statement, beautiful dress. But this is a little bit more sexy. It's this beautiful blush material with ivory lace over it. And I mean, it looks, look at the lace. It's so beautiful. And I feel like it never picked up in pictures. I didn't get enough pictures in this dress. So this is Leon Carlo, and they do still have this and sell this. I mean, this is like a, you know, cookie cutter dress. It's a specific style, and you can order it. So if I find this style of dress, I will definitely talk about it on my blog or link to it or what have you because it is just beautiful. And the bottom kind of bells out. Lola wants to say hi, tell you thanks for watching her video, and sorry because it's a little yellowy in here because of the light, but that's okay. She says thanks for looking at mom's wedding dresses. I wish she was there so bad I missed having our dogs at the wedding. Say hi. Okay, thank you so much for watching, and be sure to check out my blog, TowardsNatiara.com, and my new upcoming lifestyle website, which is TheCashmereGypsy.com. I will have lots more wedding details and things on there.